Is this the beginning of the end of Bamboo Lab? Are we seeing a business model of subscription-based service coming into play or maybe a pay-to-print option coming in like you get on inkjet printers? Let's find out. Also, will you still be able to print from Orca Slicer? Who knows? Well, we all know. We, we've kind of read the articles. We're still using as printers. So according to Bamboo Labs, they've just released a security update that's for your benefit. Um, it probably is in all honesty. It's there to stop your printer being exploited, maybe turning the temperature all the way up to 1 million degrees and burning your house down. Might be overselling that a little bit and being a little bit dramatic, but these are the kind of things that security updates normally fix. It's to stop people being dickheads basically and taking over your computer. If you're a network person, you've ever stayed in a hotel room overnight and you go searching through devices, don't you just like sending random prints to people? It's kind of fun, isn't it? Am I the only one? Okay, I'll stop admitting to that. The downside to this though is that it's going to stop third party integration, or it has stopped third party integration. So things like Orca Slicer won't be able to read the AMS anymore, won't be able to see the camera anymore. Um, it means that you'll probably have to use another program. Well, Bamboo have the other program that you'll have to use to kind of shake hands between each one, which then kind of puts an extra step in the way, kind of gets rid of that simple click of slice, simple click of print when you want to do anything. Um, and it could just be a little bit of a nightmare. But we'll kind of see where this leads and see how it goes. The other side to this is as well is that as soon as now people have got a sniff that there's something going on with Bamboo Labs, I feel like everyone jumps on that bandwagon. And social media is the worst for doing that at the moment where you'll literally just go, I don't like that opinion, that opinion offends me, or this company's doing this and this offends me. So a lot of people have probably been waiting for something like this to happen for a long time. And I think that's why it's getting so much attention and why there's so many comments on it. I mean, You'll quickly go online to moan about something, but you very rarely quickly go online to praise something. It has to be super duper good for you to actually say how happy you are with something. I definitely fall into this category. I bet I do maybe one positive comment for every 10 negative reviews, <laughs> which is pretty bad. So if something's got a lot of good reviews, it means that it might even have even more positivity because not many people will review it unless it's negative. Um, and that's, I think that's just how we work. And because of that, I think that's why people aren't liking this thing with bamboo. And they are then saying, well, I'm gonna sell my printer. I'm not gonna buy another printer. I want everything to kind of work like this. I get at the moment, it's all just speculation realistically. There is, there is what it's implementing, and I suppose if you are using Orca Slicer and you're using Panda hardware and things like that, you'd be a little bit miffed because you've now got to mess about and rechange your settings and stuff. But I think probably for, don't quote me on these figures, but I think probably for like 80% of the people out there, maybe more, we just click slice and print. Anything between that, we don't really care. And then I imagine there'll be a lot more people who maybe just click print straight from Maker World on the, on the phone don't actually download anything from any, anywhere else and slice it. It's probably all the settings are just pre-logged pre there for them. So a lot of people aren't really going to be impacted by these changes. I think it's the worry of us losing out on doing what we want to do with the hardware we've bought, which is normally the, normally the bigger issue at play here. It's people not wanting the stuff to be messed with. I think that's the, that's the bigger thing. It's we're happy, it works. Why now implement some kind of authorization to stop us doing what we're already doing and making it supposedly better for us, but really it's not better for us. Um, but then if we go back to security, I suppose if we are having people with issues with their security on their 3D printers, or because I suppose in theory, if you've got a security flaw on your 3D printer, you can then use that to access anything else on your network um, and talk to any other device. If you don't have passwords and, and um, username set up for your home network, then I suppose you could just jump onto that device or any IoT device and from there you could probably just start downloading crap off your computer. Now that's real issues right there. Of course how Bamboo Labs works with the way it prints, you are effectively being authorized on the cloud or whatever. Technically they could then maybe restrict what you print or you can only print from them. You know, there, there are factors or it might be that if you want to print an Iron Man helmet, for instance, you have to pay a royalty to print it. You can't just print it. You have to you have to buy the licensing to print it. That might be a thing that comes into play. I just have to be clear though at this one point, Bamboo Labs have not said that they will be creating a subscription service. But I mean, to be honest, with how many customers they've gained and kind of the, the direction their company's heading in, it won't surprise me if they kind of follow the, suit, the, the way that Apple and things do. Um, you know, I think they've already announced that they're going to stop support on the X1C in 2027, which I suppose is a bit strange in, in of itself. But then having said that, how much more updating does it actually need and require other than to still be able to talk to its own software? I suppose I've answered my own question there, haven't I really?
they're the updates, so it just talks to its own software. Um, but then if they put the, if they don't mess with the, the back end when they're upgrading the software, they don't have to keep updating the firmware on the printers. You know, it's one of them. It's one of those. I'm not going to lie, I'm literally making this video because all I'm seeing at the moment on uh, 3D print forums and Facebook and things like that is, down with Bamboo Labs! God damn it, I'm going to sell my 3D printer and I hope they burn to the ground! Um, if I'm being honest, I think it's a bit dramatic. Uh, like I say, my printer still works. I mean, if you've ever owned a phone, a, a TV, a laptop, or any other device that connects to the internet, you kind of have things you have to agree to. And there's parts of that equipment you just don't own. I mean, if you're like me, a millennial, you've gone through the years of buying video games and those video games no longer existing. Ah, Star Wars Galaxies, City of Heroes, and many, many more titles just don't exist anymore, you bought them, they don't exist. Whereas this isn't gonna happen, you've got the hardware, um, someone's already jailbroken, uh, from the looks of it, someone's already jailbroken the actual uh, security update, so it means that you could, with a few tweaks and setting changes, that you're kinda just gonna be running things the same as you was anyway, and if you really want to get geeky about it, you could probably just like, totally hack the firmware, change it to whatever you want, and things like that. But if I'm being totally honest, I like being in zombie mode when I'm printing, where I just click slice, print, and away we go. Don't get me wrong, there is controversies where it might be that the AMS system no longer lets you put in third party uh, filaments. That does happen. We know that inkjet printers do that right now. They literally will uh, do updates that then mean that you can't use third party inks. It'll just stop printing or give you fake errors and stuff like that. They deny this, but having worked in IT for quite a long time, I've seen this firsthand, so I know that that genuinely happens. And um, the good thing with, I suppose, with filament is you just Respool it, stick an RFID tag on, and I think someone's actually cracked the RFID code as well, so you can do that anyway. So that's not really going to have a big impact on you. I suppose what people are probably more concerned about is where this actually leads, um, and that is it could lead down to having to pay royalties when doing 3D prints, or having to buy licensing when printing, or having to just buy the print to print, um, which then kind of goes onto a slippery slope. That, I think that's what nobody wants, and I, I kind of feel like that's the community's concerns, is everything started open source, and everything was just other people's ideas, and printers got better because people were sharing ways they made them better, um, and the slicers got better because people were sharing the ways they made the slicers better, and were able to code things better, and that's kind of been the great evolution of 3D printing. Um, if it turns into a, any other industry like cars and things like that, it tends to be people and companies holding all the good, the, the good features for themselves and selling them at a premium on higher spec models. I get, I get it, it's business, you have to do these things, but I think these are the things that people are concerned about, which then leads into probably what's going on in the UK right now um, that I don't think anyone really knows about or anyone talking about, and that is they're currently trying to pass some legislation, which I kind of do understand and do agree with to some extent, where um, it'll be illegal to 3D print weapons, which makes total sense, and uh, but then what, where does that lead? Does that lead then to having to register every 3D printer? Again, this is all speculation, but uh, Tim Fall Hat Time, should put my Iron Man helmet on for this segment, shouldn't I? But, but, but yeah, well, that, what that means essentially is that if you try and 3D print anything that you shouldn't be, maybe it flags it up and sends that off to the authorities or whatever. They, these are like the things that will happen um, because this already happens with your internet provider. You know, as soon as you go to a website, that traffic's logged. Like this is, you know, torrents changed over the years, and news groups and all that type of stuff changed over the years. File sharing is not what it was. Websites aren't even what they were. Google searches aren't even what they used to be. I mean, if you look for a Google search, it will say certain information is omitted from your area, and that information is probably just due to legal legislation that's blocking your access to things. Um, is that right? I'm kind of, I don't think it really is, if I'm being honest, you know, freedom of information. I mean, if a government can shut off a giant act like TikTok overnight, what's them to stop them saying, you can't own a 3D printer anymore because you might be printing weapons of mass destruction. Am I going too far with this? Maybe I am, but maybe this is the route that things like this are taking, and it starts to get serious when we start getting a restriction on what we can actually do with our equipment. I think that this is the bigger thing at hand. We want to just be able to print fun stuff, and we don't want to be restricted by how we print that fun stuff. And once that starts happening, it kind of ruins the hobby. So yeah, I'd love to know what your take on this is, whether you think that everybody's kind of overreacting. I kind of do a little bit. Um, or whether you think that everybody is right to act this way. I kind of do agree with that also. <laughs> so it's, I'm kind of just 50-50 on this one. We do need security updates because networks do get exploited easily. But at the same time, we don't want to be having to do monthly subscriptions for things. It's literally the worst thing ever. I cancelled 
like literally Netflix, Xbox Live. Um, I haven't cancelled Amazon Prime because I use that for the deliveries. Uh, Disney Plus, Now TV. I think I've still got my Spotify because I don't pay for that. My wife pays for that. Um, I do have some other subscription services, but I think they kind of fall into business because it's stuff like Premiere Pro and Adobe and you know things like that. Um, but yeah, I think we were up to about £120 a month in monthly subscription feeds of just £4.99 here, £9.99 here, £14.99 here, £3.99 here. And before you know it, you're spending an absolute fortune. And I just would not like 3D printing to go into that kind of business model where you pay monthly for your STL files, you pay monthly to actually print and license things. And then maybe you even think, oh, well, why don't I just pay monthly to have my filament come and I don't have to worry about anything. I think you can actually do that with Amazon right now, if I'm being totally honest, you can just click and it'll just send you filament every month, which isn't actually a bad thing. But if you're saving money, it's fine. And if you're using it, it's fine. But if you find out like most subscription things where Warcraft, World of Warcraft, I paid for that for two months now and I haven't played it at all in the last two months because we just forget to cancel. These are the issues we have. Note to self, cancel World of Warcraft as soon as you finish making this video. Um, yeah, so I've rambled on for quite a long time. I don't know if I've covered any topics that anybody actually liked or cared about or was interested in. A little bit clickbaity, I think, at the moment, isn't it? So I 3D printed the power sword and totally messed up on the scaling, so it's more like a power dagger. But if you um, if you actually look at the size of He-Man and how big he is, dude's ripped and jacked. So I think this is how big his sword actually is in scale to himself, maybe? Um, I don't have the power, however, you have the power, and what I ask of that power is hit the subscribe button, please. Just, just give it a little boop. Just help this channel grow. Just a little, a little content creator from England. Just a little boop, and uh, yeah, it'll help me out massively. Really appreciate. It. Hope you enjoy yourselves. Bye bye now. Bye bye.